The huge screen flashed to life. Simon stared wide-eyed and open-mouthed as the number 22 glowed in huge red digital numbers. He tried to find some meaning to the numbers, each about a meter high in the center of a black panel. It was suspended from two chains, hanging from the high, dull ceiling and taking up most of the wall space. Simon could not move. He was strapped into a metal chair, restraints around his wrists and ankles. His legs tingled as the seat cut into the backs of his knees, restricting the blood flow. The back of the chair was high and stopping him from looking around. He could not make any sense of the number, continuing to stare at it, transfixed. They had taken him during the night. The breaking down of the door, the shouts of the men, and the screams of his family seemed to be nothing more than a blur, a bad dream. He had awoken strapped to a chair in a cold, still silence. Simon knew that there was only one reason why he had been brought here. It was because of the articles. Throughout college, Simon had spent his spare time searching for secret government documents online, hunting for any signs of a scandal, and posting his controversial findings online. He always knew it'd be a matter of time before they found him. The screen before him changed to 23. What is this? murmured Simon, scanning his eyes over the huge numbers once more. He had originally thought they may have been counting down to something. But no. Simon pondered again. I haven't been in here for 23 hours, have I? He doubted. Soon, the number became 24, and then 25, 26. What's going on? Yelled Simon in frustration as fear and confusion left him trembling in the chair. Behind him, something crackled. Temperatures now 26 degrees Celsius, said the voice of an old man through the speaker behind him. Simon watched in horror as the number before him became 27. They're going to burn me alive, Simon realized. They're going to keep raising the temperature in here until I die. He panicked, trying to break out of his restraints. His struggling triggered the numbers to rise more rapidly, increasing steadily at intervals of less than 20 seconds. When it hit 38, Simon stopped, giving up, panting heavily as beads of sweat trickled from his forehead to his chin and onto his shirt. His breathing was labored as he shouted for help, questioning the anonymous voice that had spoken to him. But there was nothing. The number continued to rise to 45 as Simon watched, still weakly trying to pull against the tight binds which dug into his flesh. Help me, please! He begged, his shirt damp with sweat. He kicked and struggled, grunting and straining as he closed his eyes to block out the numbers. Prisoner, said the voice behind him, and Simon froze as he opened his eyes slowly. The giant red 49 filled his vision. You are only sweating because you are struggling. This room is not 49 degrees. Simon calmed, his fears subsiding a little. The voice was right. 
As he was calm and still, the sweat began to dry and cool him down. He almost breathed a sigh of relief. It is the room in front of you which is 49 degrees. There was a mechanical whirring from above as the number 50 appeared, and the screen began to rise slowly, hoisted by its chains. 51, 52, 53, 54. The numbers were rising faster than before, almost in a blur. That is the room where your wife and children sit, in chairs just like yours. As the screen rose higher, it began to reveal a huge glass window directly in front of Simon. Simon. 